Alright, so I'm actually going to move the palette because I'm just going to do a couple of coats of white really quick on all of the little skulls because as it turns out, all four of the figurines that I have left are the graveyard scene and they all have little skulls on them. So I'm going to do, oh this one even has a skull on the back. So I'm going to paint all the little skulls first um, and the lettering and all of these pieces. Actually not these ones because I'm going to do these in a color. But these ones because I want to do them metallic, I'm going to go over them with white first and then all the little handles. In the coffin, I'm going to do with the white. Um, and then I will start doing the colors, just because putting a white base makes the colors a little brighter. Also because I totally forgot to put a gesso layer on all of these figurines, so... Um, it's just base coat. Coat. I didn't I didn't gesso any of them which I didn't I couldn't figure out why the paint wasn't going on as smoothly as it went on to the first set until I realized that I had forgotten to put gesso on any of them um, it's just my one of my flat brushes and I'm going to go in with a detail brush and get as close to the edge as I can. My brush is a little, a little stiff. I think I probably didn't clean it quite as well as I should have the last time I used it, so <laughs> try and put a little more water on there. Stuart Semple Whitest Whites as a base coat since I didn't remember the gesso layer. I'm hoping that this will give everything a nice, smooth, even coat for the eventual colors to grab onto. And this one has a spider web on the back, so I'm going to briefly try and go over that. I may have to do it with a detail brush. Oh, maybe not. It looks like it's doing okay.
Oops. Oh, I got that some on the gray. But that's all right, because this gray is straight from the bottle. This is not the one that I mixed up for the other tombstones, because um, I just wanted them to be just subtly different colors, so that all of the tombstones in the graveyard scene are not going to be exactly the same color. Because if you go into a real cemetery, obviously all the stones are not going to be exactly the same. because of aging, but also because of they're just not made from the same stones. Not everybody's going to choose the same stone for their grave markers. So I wanted some of them to be a little bit different. Oh! So this one I'm just going to do the two skulls. Because I think I'm going to do the spider in a custom dark purple color that I'm going to mix up. And I think that the dark purple will cover over the gray perfectly fine, even without a gesso layer. So I'm just going to do the skulls. bit of a mess with this one. Oops. I 
got some on the gray, but I think it'll be all right. Oh, look at this gorgeous black though. I love this black. This is just the Apple Barrel brand matte black. This is my favorite black acrylic paint. So good. This is two coats um, as I'm getting plaster dust from the bottom of the sculpture on it. This is two coats. It's so, so flat and so black. Oh, I love it. My absolute favorite black acrylic paint I have ever found. Oops. It's kind of okay if I make a mess of the pieces that are on the black ones because this black is so opaque that I can pretty much just cover that up with an extra coat with a detail brush. Like, I can just go in and clean that up so easily. So I don't know why I'm even worrying about this. And my camera still, it just really doesn't like to show white well. So until I start painting the detail into these areas, it's probably just going to look like a blob for the stream anyway. Kind of annoying. I really would like to get a better camera, but unfortunately, um, the stores are putting out their Black Friday sales, and I think probably because of the supply chain disruption, there's just not great sales again this year. This is the second year in a row last year because of um, COVID, obviously, and people not going out, people not being expected to go out to the stores. Plenty of people still did when they shouldn't have, but... People not being expected to go out to the stores Black Friday shopping. The sales weren't good last year either. So, broke-ass bitches like me just sitting at home here waiting for shit to go on sale forever. Might be another year before I get a decent camera. Which kind of sucks because until I can get a camera, I'm just going to have to keep streaming with one that doesn't like to focus and... 
completely blows out the lighting on anything that's too light in color. And we'll only focus, I, like my hand is literally like eight inches from the actual lens of the camera. This is where it has to be to be in focus. So it's not a good webcam. It's really not a good webcam. It's like a $15 webcam that I got on sale on Prime Day, like a year or two ago, for like $11. So I'm, I'm not really complaining because I got exactly what I paid for, which is a cheap, shitty webcam. It's just that I really would like to upgrade it, and I haven't been able to. Because sales have been garbage the last two years. Even Amazon. Like, come on, Amazon. You're making ref record profits. Where's the sales? Pass some of that on. This is how good this apple barrel black is. The Stuart Semple whitest white isn't, like, it's barely covering it. And this is a really bright white. I'd love to brag on this Apple Barrel Black, but it really is. It's fantastic. It's, it's my favorite black acrylic paint. And the back side. This is the least exciting part of this, I promise. <laughs> But it does have to be done because, like I said, I forgot to put the gesso layer on.
And then I also made a big mess with this black, which is, as I keep saying, it is fantastic, super opaque black paint. So if I don't try to go over that, then the colors will never be able to cover it. Like, it's going to take me, probably, it, it would take probably five or six coats just to get halfway decent coverage over this black if I didn't do a white base coat first. So, it is a necessary evil. But I'm kind of expecting that I probably don't really have many watchers today because this is an off streaming day for me and normally when I stream on off days I don't even have like the four people that watch my streams regularly so I'm just kind of doing it just for fun today just to put something up because it's spooky week too much. I'm getting bubbles. There we go. Screw it. Black's easy to cover. Super easy to cover mistakes. These little swirlies. I'm sure there's a name for the little swirly pieces on coffins. I, I don't know. So, that's good enough on that one. Get this one over with, and then I can get to the more exciting part of putting the colors on. Oops, that was way too much paint. <laughs>
is really hard to hold things so that they show up on camera when your camera only records things that are six inches in front of the lens. Which is a big part of the reason why I keep making such a mess out of these. Because I'm trying to hold them on camera and it's not always something being more visible on camera doesn't always necessarily mean that it's more visible to me as I'm painting it. Oh, I just, I think my face cam is blocking it, but I just put the brush against that. Uh, I probably should do these ones with a detail brush, but I just... I don't, I don't feel, feel like, like putting, putting the base coat on with a detail brush. brush. That's just so, so much work. work. Oh, I think this one probably is just a little bit too big. So I am going to get a smaller angled brush, I think. Just go with this one for my nail art brush set. It's pretty small, very thin. Yeah, that works pretty well.
Oops, I missed the one on the top. Not quite done. That's probably good enough that I can put the metallic over that and it'll So when I set that aside. Let's see which one I'm gonna start on first. Probably really this one because I want to do more colors on this one. Oh no! No, that's right. I didn't I didn't do the swirly bits on this one on purpose because I was going to put color on them. And I think the color will cover well enough on its own. The gray is pretty light. Okay, so I'm going to do the spider. Um, I'm going to do these. And then I'm going to try and put color in each of these little rings. So I'm going to do the spider in a custom blended purple. I'm going to do... The same purple for one of the rings. Um, I'm going to do, I think, orange for these bits and the next circle. Hmm. Orange. I'm trying to think what would look good. Maybe I could do green, then purple, then orange, or, or, or purple, then green, then orange. Yeah, I think purple, then green, then orange would look good. So. And I'm going to worry about the skulls last, because it's just going to be painting them white and then painting their faces on. And it's not going to be exciting. If I can just, just wipe the white the worst of that white smudge off of here. Yeah, okay. I'll worry about touching up the gray when I'm totally finished, because I think I may make a mess of these circles and have to touch them up anyway. Alright, so I think I'm going to do the orange first, just because I think it's probably going to end up being the lightest. I'm just trying to think of else I'm going to use orange so I can time this out and not have to use a second blob of orange. I want to put orange on these flowers, but only on the raised bits. I want the rest of them to be blue. So... I'm going to do blue first. Because I don't plan on using this blue anywhere else, so I can get it done and over with.
There goes my music. Okay, so this is why I wanted to do the blue first, because I knew I was going to make a little bit of a mess with it. This way I just have to worry about covering it with the orange all at once, rather than touching it up later. Well, this is showing up on camera, but this is not my favorite paint. I just haven't been able to get to a store to get a better blue paint. Um, I wanted this color, and they only had it available in a satin finish. And satin finish paints, you see how it almost looks kind of, has like a tacky finish to it? Like it sticks to itself, so it pulls itself off. It pulls, it pulls itself off of the surface. surface. <laughs> Get your minds out of the gutter, guys. Um, so it doesn't it doesn't go on very smoothly. Every single brush stroke is visible. It's just not it's not an attractive paint to work with. I feel like there probably are satin finish acrylic paints that are just fine, but being that this is. You know, you know, a one dollar tube of apple barrel paint, paint from Walmart. Walmart. This, this is, is not a good satin finish, finish paint. paint. So, cheap, cheap satin, satin finish paints, in my, in my experience, pretty much all suffer from the same problem, which is that they are just, they're, they're sticky. sticky. Like, like, they're sticky, sticky to work with. And, and it just doesn't make for an attractive finish. finish. It's, it's very hard, hard to get a smooth coat with them because, because again, they, they want to stick, stick to themselves, all the brush strokes are visible. Um, if, um, if you, you go, go over the same spot twice, twice it just tries, tries to pull itself off of the surface instead of layering over itself. So you almost have to wait for every single layer to dry before you can add to it, and I'm just, I'm a really impatient person, I don't like that. I want to be able to just paint when I want to paint, and not sit around waiting for my paint to dry. Oh, and it, like, in the crevices here, you can see it's getting, like, really gummy. It's just not good. I don't like this paint. If it, if it weren't for the fact, fact that I know I'm going to be sealing it in a way that's going to make it look nicer than when I'm initially laying it down here, I wouldn't even use it.
And also, I think while I'm doing this, I don't know if anybody's even watching my stream today, but I do just want to mention that it is slightly problematic that they have included what is clearly a Day of the Dead themed piece in a Halloween craft set because they are not the same thing at all. Um, they're very different celebrations from different cultures. Uh, sugar skulls are not a Halloween decoration, they are a Day of the Dead decoration. And obviously, yes, I am a white lady and I am going to paint this sugar skull. I asked in some Facebook groups, and I know that Facebook groups are maybe not the best resource um, on cultural sensitivity, but I essentially the answers that I got as to whether this is even an okay thing for me to paint is that it's fine for me to paint it, it's not okay for me to sell it. And I don't intend to sell this piece, so I think I'm in the clear here. Um, I was actually thinking about giving this one away on my Instagram. Um, obviously, again, because I'm a white lady who does not celebrate Day of the Dead, I don't know that it would be appropriate for me to just have this out. Um, so, you know, don't, don't hate on me, please. I'm trying to be culturally sensitive here. Uh, if, if I'm in the wrong, please tell me gently. I am absolutely willing to learn. I try to be very, you know, woke or whatever you want to say. Um, I really do try to be culturally sensitive. Uh, I have never and will never sell Day of the Dead merchandise because I don't think that that's appropriate for me to do. Um... Or I'm just making sure I haven't missed any spots with this horrible blue paint before I go to the other side. Um, so I do try to learn about, you know, these kinds of things. Because especially being a Halloween-loving goth girl, uh, the whole Day of the Dead used as Halloween decorations is an issue that comes up a lot for me. Um, and I've just sort of tried to be as sensitive about it as I can. So just more further on the topic of uh, appreciation versus appropriation and, you know, learning about things before you just start working on them. I did try to look up if there were any, like, really 
traditionally used colors in like sugar skull decorations and Day of the Dead um, decorations and things like that. And there doesn't really seem to be like a set color scheme. So the way I decided to approach this one is I'm just going to try and keep it as far away from traditional halloween -y colors as I can, because uh, I think that that's the best way to kind of enforce that this is not a Halloween decoration, and that Day of the Dead and Halloween are separate holidays celebrated by separate cultures. So I am going to have orange on the flowers, but that's just because it contrasts the best with this blue. Um, the rest of the colors are just going to be sort of bright, and they seem to be just a really bright, cheerful kind of a color scheme. Um, so lots of pinks, bright neon pinks and yellows, and um, blues, and... A lot of, essentially a lot of neon colors, a lot of primary colors, just very, very bright and attention-grabbing kind of colors. Which is definitely going to make this piece look very out of place with the rest of my um, artwork. That's a very <laughs> pretty, pretty big uh, curveball for me to be using so many colors and really bright colors on a piece because I'm not really a colorful kind of a person, <laughs> um, obviously. But I think if I'm going to do this and be culturally sensitive, then I shouldn't be changing things to fit my aesthetic. I should make them pretty traditional. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. I'm happy enough with that coverage. So I'm going to set that aside and let the blue dry. And then now I'm going to start on the orange for the two that are going to have orange. Okay. So I'm going to do these. And then, and then the inner, inner circle, circle in orange. orange. Maybe 
Maybe I should have done a white coat on these. Oops, I'm, I'm regretting my decision now. I think it'll be okay though. This orange, this particular orange doesn't start out super opaque, but it does build really nicely. So I think it'll be fine. That's good enough for a first coat, I think. See, it's not super bright, but again, this one builds. This this paint builds really well on top of itself, so I think it'll be okay. So I'm going to paint these little swirlies, um, put the orange on the flowers, and then come back and do the circles on these just so that these will have a little bit of time to dry so that i'll be able to hold the tombstone a little less awkwardly without smearing any of this paint bit more maybe I'll do the top edges a little better too I feel like I don't need to get all the way down to the gray but just because I'm not sure where I'm gonna be displaying them I do want to get the top edges at least Because if I'm looking down on them, I'm going to see the gray and it's going to bother me. Not 
too far. Top edge. Okay. Oh. For a little bit. Do the flowers. Oh, I'm really leaning over to look at these. I shouldn't do that. I just realized that I also never changed my stream title. I'll update that. I hope that updates it on Steam or on Steam on Twitch.
This is probably going to be the hardest one to paint. This one has so many little details. smudge that all right so they could be neater <laughs> I'll clean them up eventually but it's getting there I probably won't finish any of these on stream just because there's a lot left to do and I don't really intend to be streaming like all day today um Pretty much just gonna go to my normal stopping point. Even though I started late. Hey, Julie. Yeah, 
Now I know I got at least one person watching. <laughs> I haven't had anybody else chatting so far, so I don't know if they're just lurking and I haven't been talking to myself or if there's been nobody here and I've just been talking to myself for the last hour. <laughs> Here's the other one. Yeah, they're, these are the last of the figurines that I have left. I have this one and this one and this one, which is tall and it's hard to get on my camera that only likes to focus on things that are six inches in front of it. <laughs> um, and then I have the little coffin and these are all of what I have left from my figurine kit. I don't know that I ever showed the other ones when I finished them. Um, I've kind of been hanging on to them until I finished all of them but they're up on my shelf behind me. Whoops! So, there was also a tombstone with a black cat that I sent to my Halloween swap partner. Um, but I have this one with a little bat. And it just has a little web on the other side. And then this one with a pumpkin. And the little ghost that I added a bow to because I wanted a little ghosty couple and I wanted them to look different enough so one has a bow and one doesn't. And then the last two I sculpted a few pieces for because I wanted to turn them into my little um, logo skulls. So I have my mohawk skull and I sculpted the little mohawk on there. And the bow and glasses skull. So there she is. It, it is really hard to show anything on this camera. I don't know if it would be better to hold them up here. Yeah. There's these two because my logo has the mohawk skull and the bow and glasses skull. And I thought they kind of looked like a similar shape to my logo skull. So I made them look like that so that I can put them in my product photos and then I have my little logo skulls in all of my product photos as I reshoot them. So that the picture looks new and fresh. Um, oh, hey, Patio Squirrel. <laughs> yeah, so... I'm finishing up the last four. Um, 
here we go. So I'm doing this one and I'm going to do an orange, a green, and a purple ring. And then I'm going to make the spider purple. And then I'm going to paint the little leaves on this one green. Um, this one I'm just going to do probably silver handles on. Uh, and then this one I was having a great little discussion apparently with myself <laughs> about the differences between how um, Day of the Dead is not actually a Halloween thing and sugar skulls are not a Halloween decoration and it's slightly problematic that this was included in a Halloween kit but I'm painting it anyway because I think it's a really I think it's still a really well made little figurine and deserves to be painted um, and I think I'm probably going to end up giving this one away because being a white lady who doesn't celebrate Day of the Dead it feels a little awkward to have this anywhere on display in my house so I thought I would give it away to somebody who would appreciate it um, which <laughs> I do appreciate it it's nice it's pretty which is why I'm painting it but it's not just an aesthetic thing I understand that it is like an actual cultural symbol the sugar skull and I don't I don't know I asked in like a couple of Facebook groups like if it was even an okay figurine if it was problematic and I I pretty much got all answers that said that it's fine as long as you don't put it out as a Halloween decoration and as long as I as a white lady do not sell and profit off of a Mexican uh, cultural symbol so yeah not gonna sell it a profit off of it because I wouldn't do that anyway and I don't really intend to put it out for Halloween because, again, I feel kind of awkward knowing that Day of the Dead is not Halloween, putting it out with my Halloween stuff. So. Yeah, honestly, like, I... I mean, I always knew it was different, but I didn't realize that it was super problematic until probably, like, the last couple of years, honestly. Um... And I honestly, I really like that things like this are okay to be talked about now, um, because I want to know this kind of stuff. I wouldn't want to be doing something offensive by accident, you know? I'd rather somebody tell me, and I can stop doing whatever it is problematic that I'm doing, and correct the behavior, and I would like to do better. So that's what I'm trying to do with that. I, I was a little worried about it because when I bought the kit, I knew it was in there. And I almost wasn't even going to paint it because I wasn't sure it was okay. But I did get assurances that it's okay. But um, it just it's not a Halloween thing. So I'm actually not going to give it away on Halloween. I'm going to give it away um, probably on my Instagram. Um, and likely we'll do it as a Day of the Dead giveaway and not a Halloween giveaway because I don't want to associate it with that at all. I'm trying to be very unproblematic about it. I just think it's, you know, somebody went to a lot of trouble to sculpt it. And... I realize that it's mass produced, so like all of these castings have not been hand sculpted, but the original, somebody sculpted, somebody put time into it. And I just think that that deserves to be honored, I guess. <laughs> you know, you should do dolls that look like your logo. That would be so fun. That's actually why I got Abby and Effie with their green hair, green and purple hair, because they match my logo colors. Um, so they're sort of like my unofficial mascots. The logo skulls I drew several years ago. So like those are those are going to be my official mascots probably until the end of time. If I rebrand ever, like they're still going to stay my logo skulls. Um, because they're kind of... The way that I did them was to sort of represent the two sides of my personality. So you have, like, the outrageous, like, super tall, spiky, Liberty Spikes mohawk. Um, because, you know, younger me, I was a lot... I guess... I don't want to say more confident. I was just more outspoken. 
I was, I was kind of loud. Um, um, I was still, still pretty, pretty introverted, introverted, but like, yeah, yeah definitely more outspoken. outspoken. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I've kind of always been... Had, had that really loud punk side, side to me, so... <laughs> That's, That's that side, side of my personality. And then the bow and skull is kind of more where I'm at now. And it's like the two sides of my personality that are both very much still there, but it's kind of a duality. Like That's, that's my yin and yang, essentially, <laughs> is the long and short of that. It's the balances of my personality. The bit of me that wants to be really outspoken still and stand up for everything and in everybody's face every time I see an injustice and just the happy, I want to be cute and look at my cute glasses and bow, I'm, you know, a nerdy librarian side of me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly, exactly it, Julie. Julie. I can I can appreciate it. I really I, I my thing is I wasn't like immersed in any kind of Mexican culture because I grew up in a suburb of a suburb of northeast Ohio. So we don't really have Mexican cultural festivals here. We don't have anywhere that would have given that to me, but I was really big into death cultures <laughs> growing up, which Again, you know, being the being just a little baby bat goth girl, like I wanted to know every culture's beliefs on death, and that was something that I looked into extensively. So I did, you know, learn about Day of the Dead a lot younger than probably most people that I knew just through, you know, my research into death cultures. So I kind of, I, I did understand it, I did have an appreciation for it, but it just didn't really click in my mind how it's a very specific thing. Like, I, I thought it was, for the longest time, I thought it was just like, Hispanic cultures in general all did Day of the Dead. And it wasn't until recently that I learned that it's it's not. It's actually I think it's I think it's just Mexico. I don't even think it's all of South America. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I I think that it really is just Mexico. And I was kind of shocked by that because I thought I knew a lot about it, and clearly I still had very much to learn. So I am always happy to learn about different cultures. I always want people to educate me. Especially if I'm doing something wrong or if I have misinterpreted anything that I was told. Like, I, I want to be corrected because I want to I want to have an appropriate appreciation rather than appropriative um, Yeah, I don't, I don't want to appropriate. I want to appreciate, essentially. So, yeah, nothing, nothing that will profit for me. Um, like, like I was saying, I don't, I don't sell Day of the Dead stuff in my shop. Um, I've had requests from people to sew things with Day of the Dead fabric, and I'm always happy to do that. Um, I have had requests to make Day of the Dead, uh, pieces for people, either, like, my blockhead dolls with a sugar skull design, and usually if it's a white person that's asking me for it, I kind of hesitate and I try to push them towards something else just because, like, I don't know, they may have Mexican family and it may be their thing, but if they don't come right out and tell me that, like, I feel awkward about it. Um, but if it's, you know, a Mexican person came to me and said, would you make me a doll with a sugar skull? I mean, I guess I would have to assume that... It would be okay, but I'd still be very careful about how to do that. So, like, that's why I don't have any kind of sugar skull anything. I think I have one sugar skull choker in my shop because it's it's a pendant that was given to me, and it's the same price I put all of my chokers at, which is 
actually not a price I make any profit off of. It covers literally just the materials. Uh, so I think that's the only sugar skull thing that I've ever actually had in my shop. Um, I don't do Day of the Dead sales because, again, it feels inappropriate for me to do so. I do Halloween sales. I'll do Friday the 13th sales. I've never done a Day of the Dead sale. It's, it doesn't feel right. And really, I mean, up until the last few years, most of my understanding of Day of the Dead, um, anything came from encyclopedias, literal encyclopedias. Or from Wikipedia back in the early days of Wikipedia. And from the movie Coco. I don't know if that's terrible to say, but man, I love that movie Coco. I've watched it like three times. It's probably... I can't remember the time, the last time I got as excited about a Disney movie that I saw as when I saw Coco. I just thought that was such a great movie. Yeah, okay. I wasn't sure about that. I just knew that it wasn't, like, a Spanish thing, for sure. It was definitely... Um, yeah, Aztec. One of the things that I always found really fascinating is just how many cultures have celebrations, even if they don't have, like, a specific day. Um, sometimes it's, like, weeks or even an entire month um, that are set aside literally just for honoring your ancestors, like, the ancestors that have passed on and even, like... Recent, recent recent relatives, relatives. And, you and you don't, don't have, have to go to like the extremes like, like, like there's villages where they'll dig up the person's body, body and like dress them, them up and bring them to parties <laughs> and you just party with this person's corpse every year <laughs> and i think that that's a little bit extreme but i really i i do love that there are so many cultures who do have Death practices, death practices that are not mourning, mourning practices. practices. And I, I love that, honestly. Like, like that, that, that is so cool to me because funerals, funerals the way we have them in America, America they're just, they're horrible, they're horrible and depressing. And, and I understand, understand that people are grieving and like, funerals, funerals are definitely important. I would never tell somebody, don't, don't have a funeral. funeral. But, I but I just think that, I don't know. I just think that it's a lot cooler when you celebrate the life that the person lived rather than just focusing on how sad it is they died so i think that that's really really awesome how many cultures have time set aside every single year to go back and look at everybody who has died in that year and you just celebrate like every happy memory that you have with them Book of Life I haven't seen yet. I still have to see that one. Coco's on Netflix, so I've already watched it twice this year. <laughs> oh, I love Coco. It's such a cute movie. I would absolutely love to have characters or character dolls made from Coco, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing it myself. I think those would have to be some that I would have to find. 
a Mexican artist to make them for me in order for them to feel like something that I should have. Um, otherwise it feels, again, appropriative. But I would love that. Man, my Netflix watch history is... My watch history on all the streaming sites this month has just been really bizarre. <laughs> it's basically been all horror movies and British Baking Show and Coco. <laughs> and a little bit of, like... A um, little bit of Goosebumps... <laughs> no that's that's exactly what i mean julie yeah i lost i lost a really good friend last year very suddenly and unexpectedly and i set up a group chat um his mom had called me because she didn't have contact information for anybody else that he had gone to uh fashion design school with um, and she had my contact information because I had actually been helping him out with a uh, whole messy situation involving a legal case against the school, actually. So she had, like, my full contact information and had looked me up, and I was the first person she got in contact with, so I had set up a group chat to keep everybody updated about like the funeral information and everything and it basically just turned into like all of us sharing our great memories of like the fun times that we had together and you know obviously it was sad but there was a lot of laughter shared in that thread and i just thought that was really beautiful um because obviously i contacted the people that I was in contact with, and they had contacted other people, so there were people sharing memories that didn't know each other, and we were just all sharing, like, really happy times, and I just thought it was great. And it just kind of confirmed that he was exactly the person we all thought he was. And I mean that in a good way. I realize I just realized that could have sounded terrible, but no, he was he was a really good person. He was one of those people that like puts up the you know grumpy grandpa kind of exterior of I don't really like anybody. I don't want to hang out with anybody. I just want to be by myself. But like genuinely, one of the kindest, most thoughtful people I have ever had the honor of being friends with. And he really, you know, again, he put up the tough front, but he really cared so deeply about all of his friends. And it was just so beautiful to see how many people cared about him right back. And unfortunately, because of COVID, I couldn't actually go to his funeral. So it was really nice to have that to be able to do instead. Um, and I did feel like there were probably enough people in there to let his mother know, even if, you know, nobody managed to get the message passed along as to why I couldn't make it. The fact that so many people from his school did manage to show up, I'm sure would to know that I did, you know, I did my part. I got everybody there that I could. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. If we would gotten to grow old together, like, we 100% would have been the grumpy old couple in the old folks' home. You know, we would have been all of the... 
all, all of the like, like grouchy people, people who sit in the back and just ah, oh, this TV show is terrible. Is terrible. Oh, the, oh, the food, food here is awful. awful. Why, Why doesn't anybody come to visit out? us? But, you know, we would have been having a great time <laughs> just being with each other. Like, that's the kind of... That's the kind of people that you really don't realize how much you're gonna miss until they are gone. Is the ones who are so grumpy. But, like, lovable grumpy. He was actually the first person to ever get me to do karaoke. Still the only person since then. <laughs> but I'm sure it'll happen again eventually. But yeah, he was the first person to convince me to do karaoke ever in public. But yeah, I just, I kind of love the idea of people doing the same thing for me when I'm gone. Just turning it into like a group celebration instead of a whole bunch of mourning. Like, obviously you're gonna cry and be sad and that's okay, but like, I hope that I have that kind of an impact on other people. Where they'll remember times that I made them laugh or times that I inspired them to do something. Do one more coat on the little rings. I just heard the Amazon delivery, but I'll get that in a bit. <laughs> I want to at least finish the orange before I do anything else. I feel oh, I feel like I haven't been going that long today because I I really haven't. I started late. <laughs> I just I can't get myself together this week. <laughs> I'm struggling. I'm still struggling with my asthma, unfortunately. 
Uh, I just got a five-day dose of 40 milligrams of prednisone this week. Which I normally take, like, child-sized doses of medications because I am unusually sensitive to medications, but because this has been ongoing and it is starting to become a little worrying, um, we're gonna do 40 milligrams. And I'm really trying to avoid going in for an appointment, which is the big thing. Like, I don't, I don't want to be in a doctor's office right now. It, it just feels like a really bad idea. So kind of just trying to do what we can from home without having to go in. Um, but unfortunately, if this continues to be a persistent issue, I may have to see an asthma specialist. This is my poor primary care doctor who really does his best. He's a fantastic doctor. Um, I know I'm unbelievably lucky to have a doctor who answers messages on weekends and at three in the morning sometimes. Like, <laughs> I've had to respond to messages and say, go to bed to my doctor. Because this guy just, oh, he's, he's too good to his patients. But yeah, he's... He's not an asthma specialist. He does what he can, and we're coming to the point where it's, okay, well, we've tried this and it's not working, and I'm out of my depth. Um, which is, again, it's unfortunate, but it happens. But, you know, I really do appreciate that he's willing to try to keep me out of the office. Because I am, like, he knows that I'm a compliant patient. Like, if he tells me to do something, I'm going to do it. Like, if there's, if I'm ever having an, any appointment during when they're doing residents and students and all of that. He always sends the residents and students in to talk to me because apparently I'm a model patient. I have a lot of medical issues and they're, I have multiple rare conditions. So like I'm an interesting case, but I also am well versed on how to take care of myself. I stay up to date with all my medications. Um, yeah, like, I come in with a medication list on an app on my tablet, so, like, I'm ready to go. If you ask me, when did I take this, what was the dose, like, I can pull that shit up faster than you can. So, that does help my case, I've noticed. I tend to, once once I've established enough of a relationship um, with a doctor for them to figure out that... I am a very compliant patient. I don't want to waste your time. If I'm seeing you, I'm genuinely feeling awful, and I will do what I need to do to feel better. Like, I get I get better care from some of my doctors than they probably give their average patients. And it's taken me, like, 25 years to get through every department and every specialty, and sometimes every doctor in every specialty at my current hospital system to find these good doctors, but when I find them, I hold on to them, man. <laughs> I do absolutely everything I can not to make them angry because they are good doctors and I want to keep them. It's actually been one of the biggest challenges to trying to move is that my mom and I are in the same boat with our doctors. Like, we both see our doctors at the same places. We actually share several of our doctors. Um, and we don't want to lose our doctors. So, like, we can't look at houses that are going to make it too difficult to be able to see our doctors. Because, like, I've had people try to send me houses that are generally in the area that are for sale. 
but I'll say, no, that's the wrong direction. And, you know, I'll have to explain that it's the right direction for my mom's work commute to be made shorter, but that makes our doctor commute shorter, and unfortunately that means that we wouldn't be able to see any doctors on days that she works, and she works five days a week in the afternoon, so... We basically would have like three days a month to be able to see doctors and fill prescriptions and all of that. So it kind of sucks. But that's American healthcare. All right. think what I want to do next. Alright, I'm going to touch up the areas where I got orange onto the blue. I got this awful blue paint that I hate. I really need to be able to get to a store soon. I wish people around here would just get their vaccines so I could leave my house. Because again, now that I'm on prednisone, I can't go and get my vaccine until I'm off of it. I mean, I could, but we don't really know. There's not really been a ton of research into exactly how effective vaccines are if you're taking immunosuppressive drugs like prednisone. So... I could, but I'd rather just wait. Because if I wait a couple of weeks, it should be back to normal and I should be able to get it and not have any weird effects. I might get my flu shot now, though. Make the blue shot, shot effects a little. Maybe it would uh make me not get as sick. That would be nice. I don't know. I think I'm due either this year or next year to update my pneumonia vaccine too. But ugh. other than COVID, I think the pneumonia vaccine is the worst one I've ever had. And I made the stupid mistake of getting that at the same time as I got my flu vaccine the one year and I legit thought I was gonna die yeah maybe I'll wait on that too then just to keep it more effective Definitely not skipping any vaccines this year, though. My chest has been so tight from the asthma just all month that I don't I don't want to do it. I don't want to do that with pneumonia or the flu or God forbid COVID. Although if I get COVID, I'm gonna be straight up pissed because like I never leave my house, so I shouldn't even be able to get it. The only time I leave my house is to go and look at other houses that I might move into. <laughs> like, that's the only time I go out anymore. I don't go to stores. I don't do anything. I sit at home. I play with my bunny. <laughs> Sometimes I go online and I play silly games and scare myself or I do art things. <laughs> I 
I've been saving the really scary games for my Halloween stream tomorrow. I haven't decided which one I'm going to give in and download. Because I have several that I could play. I could do Amnesia. I could do... I have Outlast. I have the Blair Witch. Um... See, what else do I have? I have World War Z. I, I claim all these games from the Epic Store because they're they have a free game every week and I always claim it no matter what it is, just in case it's something I could play on stream and enjoy. But I got all of these and I'm like, why did I claim these? These are really, really scary and I don't know I'm ever gonna play them. But, but I, I figure I'll do it for Halloween, because I think it'll be kind of funny. funny. <laughs> like, I played that Poppy Playtime game last week. That was... I did enjoy it. It was really scary. Like, scary enough that my stomach was hurting because my muscles were so tight and tense the whole time I was playing it. But it was really fun. So, like, that's not something I can do regularly, but... I think for Halloween it could be fun. I just have to pick one and decide what I'm going to subject myself to. I know I'm not going to get very far if I do Amnesia or Outlast. And I know that the dog dies towards the end of Blair Witch, but I'm pretty sure I won't get anywhere near the end of it. And then there's another one. Oops. That's been recommended to me a few times. That's called Emily Wants to Play. And it's basically like a really intense game of hide and seek with a possessed doll. <laughs> so that one could be fun. Um, let's see, what else do I have? I have Alien Isolation I could play. Oh god. I think my soul might leave my body trying to play that one. So, there's the flowers on those done. Ish. <laughs> I have to clean them up later. But that's good enough for now. Alright, I'm going to do the green circle. So I think I'm going to go for about another 20 minutes because it is 5.40 right now. I'm going to go until 6. So I'm still feeling pretty good. I'm not getting wheezy like I expected I would be after talking for this long. So that's a good sign. Hopefully that means that this round of prednisone is working better. Um... 
and that I will not have to worry about this asthma anymore after this. It's really weird that I would have an asthma flare now because I've never had one in the fall before. And I honestly would have thought with as little as I leave my house that it would have been a lot better this year. Like at first, I honestly thought that maybe it was just that I was reacting to something in the laundry detergents that I was washing my masks with. Because um, obviously, like, it's fine on my skin, but putting a mask right up on my face, like, that could definitely be problematic. But the only time I wear my masks is when we go out to look at houses, and we haven't been doing that as frequently. And obviously the asthma has still been an issue, so I don't think that's it. <clears throat> um, and I don't think that it's just allergies, because... I mean, I'm allergic to dust and I'm allergic to my rabbit's hay, but that's... That's really all I'm allergic to indoors. My, my allergies are almost entirely outdoor allergies. I'm allergic to plants. Caps, which we don't have any of in the house. Basically all pollen. <coughs> my wheezy coughs because I didn't grab myself a water before I sat down. I'm just going to take that as my cue to start finishing up as quickly as I can. Okay, and then my music's going off again. I wish that I could, like, play movies or, like, non- royalty free music while I work because it feels really weird after basically having horror movies on non-stop for the last like week week and a half to suddenly just have music <laughs> where'd all the screaming go <laughs> I went on to Amazon Prime. I actually went on there to look for um, Jennifer's Body. I wanted to watch that one. And I knew that that was on Prime. But when I went to the Prime front page, I saw that they had uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer and I Still Know What You Did Last Summer on their front page. And I was like, oh man, I haven't watched those in years. Definitely watching those. So I watched both of those, and then apparently they made a third sequel after that that I didn't know about. So I watched that too, and it was just as corny and terrible and wonderful. Um, and I guess there's now, like, a series that they made on Amazon Prime. I haven't watched that yet. I don't know that I want to go that deep down the I Know What You Did Last Summer rabbit hole. Um... But yeah, I watched those. Um, what else did I watch? Oh, I watched uh, Juwan, the original version of The Grudge, which was good. I liked that one. That was really fun. I, I really liked the storytelling style of that one. Because um, it, was, it was structured almost like chapters, like in a manga, which was... Very, Very different, different from, from the other horror movies I've been, been watching. watching. <laughs> um, I also watched The Ring because somebody said that the U.S. remake of The Ring was better than the original. 
And I watched it, and I did not enjoy that one. I thought it was really stupid. So, I'm glad that at least Juon was enjoyable. Alright, I'm gonna do the purple for the spider, but I also want to do one more coat of orange here. And then I started one last night. It's on Tubi. Uh, T-U-B-I, which is this, like, free streaming thing. Um, you have to watch it with ads because it's free, which is fine. Uh, because, for whatever reason, my browser, the ads are broken. <laughs> so, um, like, I turn my ad block off to play the movies, and the ads just, they don't play. <laughs> uh... Yeah, yeah, anyway, so I found one on there. It's, it's just called 1031, and it's an anthology of Halloween-themed horror stories. So I started that one last night, and I got about... I think I got, like, three or four stories in. Um, it was pretty fun. Cheesy, corny kind of thing that I like. Um, I think I want to watch more of those, though, like the Halloween specific anthologies just leading up to Halloween. Because um, I always watch Trick or Treat on Halloween. After after Trick or Treating ends. Like, that's my tradition. I, I make myself wait every year and I put it on after all of the Trick or Treaters have stopped. Not that my neighborhood gets any. But... I put it on at like 7.30, 8 o'clock on Halloween night and I sit and I watch Trick or Treat every single Halloween. It's my favorite movie and I only let myself watch it once a year so that it never ever gets old. Um, and then I found one a few years ago that I also enjoyed called Tales of Halloween. Which is not as good as Trick or Treat but it's still really... Fun and enjoyable and kind of along the same theme as Trick or Treat, where it's like moralistic kind of tales. So it's like a modern fable kind of a thing, which I really enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I also watch Halloween 3 every year it's my favorite of the Halloween movies <laughs> which makes a lot of people mad every time I say that but it's not even just because like it doesn't have Michael Myers in it like I know a lot of people like to make the joke that that's the best Halloween because it doesn't have Michael Myers I don't, I don't care like I like the original Halloween it's fun it's cheesy but, but Halloween, Halloween 3 is just, like, peak Halloween movie for me, you know? Like, it's peak Halloween slasher. Whereas Halloween, like, it's a good slasher movie, but you really could watch it any time of the year and be entertained by it. But Halloween 3, you really can only watch around Halloween. If you try to watch it any other time of the year, it doesn't feel right. So... I watch that one around Halloween every year. And then the obvious ones, like Hocus Pocus. I watch that every Halloween, but... But my mom loves that one, too, and she's going to be off of work for, like, a week. So I'm going to wait and watch that one with her on one of her days off. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween 3 is a very divisive movie it is terrible I will I will admit that it is a straight up awful movie like it is not good but it is so funny like it's so unintentionally hilarious I just love it <laughs> alright bye Julie 
you won't miss much because I'm going to be ending in about 10 minutes here anyway. I honestly liked the the newest Halloween. I haven't seen Halloween Kills yet. I kind of want to because the last Halloween movie was actually my favorite Halloween movie. I just loved Jamie Lee Curtis in that last, the 2018 Halloween movie so much. Like her character was just so enjoyable. I think that if I were going to put any other Halloween movie into my regular rotation, it would probably be that one. I've heard Halloween Kills is really divisive too, so I feel like now I need to see it and figure out if I'm going to be on the I love Halloween 3 side of the fence or the Halloween 3 was a mistake side of the fence for Halloween Kills. Because I, I feel like, like it could honestly go either way with me. I'm very ambivalent on the few Halloween movies that I've seen. Okay. Definitely thinking I should have put a white coat down under the orange because it's just not... It's not popping the way I want it to. I'm going to have to debate with myself if I want to do a white coat right now. And, and then, then go, go back, back over it with a orange. <laughs> but I'm going to mix the purple. Give myself time to ponder on that. Oh, oh, oh more of this purple. purple. That's all right. It's, it's a new tube of paint. paint. I've, I've only used it a handful of times. It, it should be okay. I'm going to be really careful with this one because I only want to do a couple, couple of drops of it at a time. Alright, there's one. Two. Let's start with that. So another movie that I like to watch every year that can be somewhat divisive, surprisingly, is Nightmare Before Christmas. And I actually do not watch Nightmare Before Christmas at Halloween. And that is the divisive issue for a lot of people, is whether Nightmare Before Christmas is a Halloween movie or a Christmas movie. And for me, I kind of feel like it could be either. And I can understand the interpretations for having it be either. But for me, I don't know. It just, I used to watch it at Halloween and Christmas, but the older I get, the more it just feels like a Christmas movie to me. So I watch it at Christmas. Like, I have my Halloween movie rotation. And then I have my Christmas movie rotation. And that's, you know, things like... I love a Christmas story. I watch a Christmas story every year. I watch Christmas Vacation every year. Um, I watch Elf every year. Sometimes I can barely wait for December to watch Elf. I won't even lie. I love Elf. Like, unapologetically, Elf is one of my favorite movies of all time.
and, and I say, say that as somebody who really isn't into Christmas, Christmas. Like, like Christmas is not my thing, but I do, I really love me some Christmas movies, man. I watch Home Alone, I watch Christmas Story, I watch Christmas Vacation, I watch Elf, I watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, I think that's it. No, I watch, um... Last, Last year, year we added Bad Mom's, Mom's Christmas, Christmas into the rotation, so, so that's in there now. Uh, um, I used to do Rudolph, Rudolph and Frosty every, every year. year. I don't I always feel, feel like watching them every, every year now, especially, especially Rudolph. Rudolph, Rudolph kind of sucks. sucks. Like, the, like the first time I tried to watch it as an adult, after not watching it for a few years... years. I kind of couldn't get into it. Like, it's it's kind of a shitty movie. Like, they're really mean to Rudolph. <laughs> it just, it doesn't make me happy to sit there and watch that. So I don't really watch Rudolph anymore. Oh, the Santa, Santa Claus, Claus, that's another good Christmas one. one. So, so, yeah, I don't really like Christmas, but I like Christmas movies. Whereas, I love Halloween, and I don't really have that many Halloween movies that I watch every single year. Other than Trick or Treat, Hocus Pocus, Halloween 3... I usually, I usually watch Shaun of the Dead, Dead around Halloween, too, too, but I could watch Shaun of the Dead any time of year. Like, like there, there's, there's no appropriate time, time to watch Shaun of the Dead. Like, like my actual, actual favorite movie changes, changes pretty, pretty frequently, but it's, it's almost always um, a tie between Shaun of the Dead and Zombieland. So, so like those two, two yeah, yeah I'll, I'll watch them around, them around Halloween because it's, it's an excuse to watch, to watch my favorite movies, but they're, but they're not, not really in the permanent rotation. rotation. Like, like if, if I, I don't get, get to them, them, I don't, I don't get, get to them, them and that's fine. Because I'll, I'll definitely watch them some, some other point during the year. I did, I did for a couple of years, years um, themed Halloween, Halloween movie marathons, but it just got kind of hard to keep up with. Like, like I do a ghost week, week and then I do a creature feature week. And I, and I think, think that doing them by a week is a little bit easier. easier. But, but I remember, I think I, I only did it once where I tried, tried to do an A to Z marathon and watch a movie every day. For every, for every letter of the alphabet. And there, and there are, are some, some letters, letters that it was just very hard to find movies for. for. Like, like, I really, really struggled with Q. I ended, I ended up, up watching Queen of the Damned, Damned which... I really, I really couldn't get into at the time. I, I do want to try and give it another shot, because... I feel, I feel like, like it's probably a decent movie, movie and I just... Well, I don't know if it's decent. It's pretty cheesy, but I feel like it's the kind of movie I would normally enjoy, and I think I just wasn't in a good headspace, because I tried to do a really stressful way to marathon Halloween movies in the middle of a stressful year, and it just kind of got to me to the point where it wasn't really an enjoyable thing anymore. That was actually the last year that I've done any of my personal challenge marathons with my horror movie watching because it just it wasn't enjoyable it started out really enjoyable but it got to be not fun very quickly
Ooh, I think that might have actually been the Amazon delivery. Pretty sure I just heard a box. Oh, it's six o'clock. All right, I'm going to finish the spider. Do my little circles. And then sign off because I got to go feed my bunny. She went to bed really late after lunch today because she was being playful. She didn't want to go to sleep. <laughs> so I think she'll be all right if I feed her a little bit late. But I don't want to push it, you know. Because she's got to come out for her evening playtime. I don't want her to be sitting in a food coma when she's supposed to be coming out and playing. Like my sleep schedule is getting so messed up by this prednisone. I don't want to make it worse by making, making my furry, furry alarm lose, lose her sleep schedule as well. I need, I need her, her to wake me up in the mornings. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> Otherwise, I just don't wake up. Quickly putting a second, I just realized I was completely off camera. Putting a second coat quickly on the spider before I do the little rings. This is a good purple I mixed up. I like this. I'm gonna have to definitely finish this one before this paint dries up. <laughs> Either that or I may see if I have one of my little paint containers that I can empty out to save this in. This just came out really pretty. I don't know if I could mix this exactly a second time. So, oops, other side. There's the little spider. Okay. Teeny tiny detail brush again. Do these little circles. I love how this one's coming out. These were good color choices. I have to touch the spider. I just, I just have, have to pretend, pretend it's a real one. one.
for the little circle there. Nearly finished. Yeah, I don't see any that really needs to be touched up. There's some places that I could touch up. I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't mess with it, <laughs> but I'm gonna. Because I can't help myself. I do want to get into some of these little creases between the legs just a little better with my detail brush here. I'm going to go back with the gray and fix them up more later, but just for now, I'm going to make sure that there's an even coat all the way up these legs. So this doesn't translate great on camera. My lighting is much, this is, this whole thing is a lot brighter in person here. See, this is more color accurate, but it's still kind of washed out. These colors are a lot brighter in person, and I'm really liking how well this is coming out. Yeah, good color choices here. Okay, um... As long as the spider's done and I don't have to worry about my paint drying out before I need to do any more of it, I think I'm good to call it a day. I'm just going to throw one more coat on just to be safe. I probably don't need it, but I would rather be safe than sorry. Just because anytime I use a custom blended color, I really don't like to run out of it. This is such a pretty color. I'm definitely going to see if I have a container I can save this in. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to try and remember that I covered the bottom of the little... Um, palette section with the light purple and then did three drops of dark purple to get this color. Which I think equals out to either a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 ratio, but I'm not 100% sure. So I guess I probably could mix up something very close, if not exactly similar. Because that's about the ratio I think I would probably have started with if I were mixing in a container anyway. I know I'm off camera now, I'm just, <laughs> just, just trying to finish, finish up quickly. It goes a lot faster if I can see it than if you can see it.
Okay. All right, so, whoa, I just got very dizzy <laughs> all of a sudden. Okay, definitely another good sign to stop. So, all right, this is what I've gotten done today. I've got most of this one finished. I do want to put another coat or two of the orange down. I'm just debating if I want to cover it with white first. Excuse me, because it's not coming out as bright as I want it to. It came out perfectly bright in the circle. That's what I don't understand. So I may just keep adding coats to this and just hoping for the best because I think it'll get there eventually. And then I just need to clean up the gray, do the skulls, and put the eyes in the spider. So this one's just about done. Uh, this one, not super exciting. So I'll probably do this one. I'm going to do this one off camera. This one... I, well, I guess technically I'll probably do all of them off camera because I want to finish them, most of them, by Halloween. And <laughs> we've only got a few days left. So, yeah. All right, there's this one. That's all I got done today is those flowers. I, I'm happy with the flowers. I need to clean up the edges with the black, but I think they came out pretty well. And I want to put some little dots in you know, those dots on the flower petals. I'm just not sure what color yet, so I'm going to hold off until I pick a color. All right, and this one, you know, I'll get it done. <laughs> I'll post them when I'm finished, and when I post them is probably when I give away the sugar skull one. So. Okay, um... I guess that's going to be it for today. So thanks for watching. Um, let's see. Announcements before I sign off. Yeah, so I'm going to do my game stream again tomorrow. Um, anyone watching who has an opinion on what games I should play tomorrow, definitely let me know. Uh, the ones that I know for a fact that I have that are ready to go are Blair Witch, Amnesia, Outlast, uh, I have Dead Space, I could do um, Alien Isolation. That's what I can think of off the top of my head. I know I have other games that are scary that I can play, so... If there's something you want to see, let me know. Especially if it's free or I already own it. I will be more than happy to make that the game for tomorrow. So I'm going to go now, look over my games, try and decide what I want to do. And then tomorrow night, 9, 9.30, somewhere in there, I'm going to start the game stream. Doing properly scary games for Halloween. <laughs> um... I'm going to try and find my bat onesie that I wear every Halloween so I can wear that on stream because that'll be fun. So, all right. Yep, that's it. Thanks for watching.